CBC Science correspondent Bob McDonald has a closer connection to Cassini than most. He saw it before its launch on an assembly line in Pasadena, California. And then two decades later, he watched as NASA lost its signal forever. Bob joins me now. Good to have you here. Hi, Duncan. What was going through your mind when NASA lost its radio signal for the first time in 20 years? Yeah, well, it was kind of bittersweet. You know, it's always sad to see these robots meet their demise, but it was time. Uh, the robot had gone farther than they expected. It was way beyond its expiry date, and it was running out of fuel. They didn't want to leave it drifting in the Saturn system because there was a chance it could hit one of those moons, and uh, the moons may harbor life, and we didn't want to contaminate it. So they drove it into the atmosphere to dispose of it permanently. So, yeah, end of an era. It's been orbiting Saturn for 13 years yeah. now. What were Cassini's most important discoveries? Well, there's too many to mention, but uh, Saturn's known for its rings, so I thought I'd build you a model of Saturn's rings right here in the studio. I have a bowl of water. I'm just going to swirl the water around a little bit with a spoon, and I have some pepper. And when I put pepper on top of the water, it will stay on the surface and we get all these little particles floating around in the water. These are the ring particles. They're snowballs. They're about the size of your head, the size of your fist, the size of a house, and they're Saturn in the middle. So that's sort of what it's like, except they extend much, much farther out. What they found with Cassini was looking at these rings, they're extremely organized, and there are little tiny moonlets within them that are guiding these particles around, and that's the same kind of process that happened in our early solar system when the Earth was being formed. We came from a big cloud of debris of dust and dirt and particles, and some of us became planets. So we actually got a, an insight into our own beginning by looking at this. And if we look at it from the edge, look at how thin they are. They're very, very thin, uh, only 10 meters wide, but, or thick, but as wide as the distance between the Earth and the Moon. It's a remarkable, remarkable system. Okay, so Cassini's gone now, though, yep. for good. One of the things, incredible things that it raised was that the possibility that there might be life on another planet. What's next for scientists? That must be very enticing. It's very that. exciting. Two of the moons uh, have conditions. Uh, Titan has rain, it has lakes, it has rivers, but it's methane that's doing that, not water, because it's so cold there. And the conditions on Titan, one scientist said, it's like the primitive Earth in deep freeze. It's what the Earth used to be like before life happened here, before there was oxygen in our atmosphere. So that's very interesting, whether or not life emerged or will emerge in the future. And then this other moon, Enceladus, an ice moon with an ocean inside it, a saltwater ocean. And maybe there are hot thermal vents coming out of it, like at the bottom of our ocean, with life there. We don't know. That's why we need to go back to Saturn and look at those moons. If we go back, they'll be the target, not Saturn itself, because of these incredible possibilities. But don't expect that until about the 2030s. Well, thank you so much. Fascinating as always. Okay, Duncan.